Hi guys, it's Kelly Taylor here and I am back with another video for Trinity Stamps. Today we are going to be using this Wildflower Garden um, stamp from the newest release. Super love this. I think it's really, really cute. Um, and I'm going to be using the coordinating dies as well. We're going to be talking about blending colored pencils. So if you watch my videos, normally you know alcohol markers are kind of my go-to, um, but I've been wanting to kind of incorporate more colored pencils lately because I do know that that's pretty common uh, coloring medium for a lot of you. So I have some pencils, I have my sharpener, and then I also have um, these, they're, uh, what do we call them? They're like paper stumps um, and then the Fantastics are, are pretty similar as well. Um, either one of them will work. I also have this little sanding pad. This is how you clean your stumps when you get color on them. So if you want to switch color, you just kind of rub them onto the sandpaper um, and there's a bunch of sheets on there. I got mine as part of a kit, um, but if you, I mean, you don't even need this necessarily. You could just use like sand, you know, like sandpaper from your local store. You just need something to rub it on that's going to um, clean off the color. And I do try to uh, shape mine into more of a point as I'm doing it, like I'm turning it, um, because I feel like that gives me a uh, better opportunity to get into some smaller areas. Here's a couple of ways that we can um, blend. So we can use baby oil, we can use Gamasol, or we can just use the pencils. Some people are really sensitive um, to chemicals and things. So the first one we're gonna do is the pencils. We have a white pencil here. And basically I'm gonna do a layer of color and then I'm gonna do a layer of white. Then I'm going to do my next darkest color and a layer of white. Now, you don't have to do this with the white. You can just blend them doing multiple layers of the same color, but this is a technique that I learned, and it's the one that I use when I'm coloring colored pencils on dark cardstock. So that layer of white helps it kind of pop off. And then this is really just about building up the pigment in the fibers of the paper to get a smooth result. A lot of times when you're using colored pencils, the look that people don't love is that you can still see the texture. Now, sometimes, you know, when you're coloring something, you want to see the texture. So like if you're coloring like an animal, you know, maybe you might want the... Um, the texture of the paper for like uh, the hairs or the fur. But if you want a smooth result, this is a really good way to do it, which is just the pencils and adding nothing else. These other two, we're going to do the same thing. So we're putting down the lightest color, then we're putting down that mid-tone blue, then we'll put down the darkest blue. So then we're going to work, then we're going to work in reverse. Um, you do need to have pigment down in order for this to work, for the blending to work. You need to have enough pigment down um, for the whatever, whichever medium you're using, whether it's the Gamasol or the baby oil. There's somebody else I know that had used orange oil as well. Um, and so basically, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the Gamasol. You just tap it onto the nib, and then you can just rub it on there and pull the color through. It does make the color a little bit more vibrant, and also it smooths it out. So it fills in all of the texture of the paper, um, and then you can see there's plenty of leftover. So if you really wanted to go from dark to light, you could continue uh, on past the, you know, the section that you that you colored. For the baby oil, um, it doesn't continue on quite. It does. It does. Um, blend them. You'll you'll see that here. You know, it does blend them, but it doesn't carry the color quite as far as the Gamasol. So you'll see once I start to get kind of to the edge, um, it's just not as, it doesn't carry as much over. Like here when I'm scribbling it off, see how much less pigment is there? But any of these will work to give you a really smooth blend for your colored pencils. 
For my card today, I'm going to be using the Gamsol. Um, that's what I kind of, that's what I learned with. And so that's what I'm using. I was a little unsure about what kind of ink to stamp in. So I tried um, Gina K's Amalgam Ink. I tried Hero Arts Intense Black. I tried Hero Arts Pitch Black. And I tried Picket Fence Studios. The Gamasol didn't smear any of them. Um, the Baby Oil did smear, um, I think, the Hero Arts one up at the top. So... Here is our image stamped out, and then we're going to go in and just uh, do our, our coloring. You may want to make sure when you're working with colored pencils that you do have very sharp pencils. It seems silly, um, you know, because they'll still color if they're blunt. And that's true, they will, but it does make it much more difficult to get into smaller areas. So looking at some of these, like, stems or that rose kind of on the right hand side where there are smaller areas if you don't have a sharp tip to get into those uh, you may end up getting color where you don't want it so for me i like when i'm working with colored pencils you'll see that for the most part i hold my hand kind of back on the pencil for a really, really long time, I had a hard time coloring with colored pencils because my hand would hurt. Like I was, I, I was literally gripping the thing for dear life. And it's because I wanted to put down a lot of pressure. Um, and if you find that you're, you're doing that when you're coloring and your hand hurts, back it up on the pencil because you cannot, it's, it's impossible to put down that much pressure, um, when your hand is that far back. And it's still something that I have to practice to this day. Um, but Colored pencils is all about building up layers of color, filling in the fibers of those paper, and just, you know, layering them on top of each other. Now, the, the Gamasol or the Baby Oil, um, you know, those are going to help blend them together and give you a smoother result so you don't see that texture. Uh, and like I said, it does make it a little bit more vibrant, but you do have to have, you have to have pigment down in order for it to move. Something like this, uh, I do have a harder time getting as much dimension as I would with my Copic markers, um, but I think that's just because it's, I don't want to say user error because I don't think we're doing anything wrong, um, but I think I'm just not as well versed in colored pencils as I am in Copic markers. And, you know, we're, we're always learning new things, me, you, all of us. Um, so sometimes it's good to kind of practice with another medium and see what it is that you like and what you are able to achieve. Um, but you can see I'm going back and forth, like lightest color, darkest color, um, and just layering those up to try to make sure that I do have some dimension before I even bring in the Gamasol to kind of smooth it all out. Um, I just want to make sure that I have enough pigment down that it's not going to, that it, that it is going to be vibrant. So... I'm showing you this one in, um, you know, in kind of regular time, but I am going to speed it up because I'm really slow with colored pencils. Um, and I, again, I think when you're a person who maybe colored pencils are your medium, you're probably a lot faster. Or if watercolor is your medium, you're, you know, you're, you're fastest at that. Uh, this is a new to me medium, not new to me, but you know, it's not my go-to. Um, and so I am a little bit slower when it comes to coloring them. Also, I do want to note that you don't have to, you don't have to use any of these. Like you could just color them with, with the, the colored pencil and if you're happy with the way that they look, then that's great. You don't need to use anything to blend them. This is just another couple of options that you can use if you are looking for a way to kind of blend them a little bit more. 
and you do have to um you know go back and kind of re- like almost refill your blending stump um because you will use what's le- you know what is on the the stump um and then it will run out so it's almost like re- like refilling your little <laughs> your little pen like back in the old days how um like you would have to keep dipping your quill into the ink uh it's kind of like the same concept where you have to go back and and dip it in to make sure that you have enough um so i went with just kind of a variety of colors um there isn't you know, they're wildflowers. And they're this is super cute. And I love that it's it's a big enough image to carry the whole card. Um, but you can color them whatever whatever color you know makes your heart happy. You can also, like you can see what I'm doing here, if after you've blended it out, you decide that you want to add more pigment or more shadows um in the like kind of like the sunflower. Um I went in and like added some dots for some texture. Uh, you can go back over it after you have blended it out um, and and add more layers. So just because you've, you know, gone over it with the a gamma sol or baby oil or, or whatever, you're you can still go back in. You're not um you're not stuck forever. Like you're not married to it. So here is where we are kind of um, speeding things up because I'm not fast. I'm not fast about it. And I chose um, to do, like I said, with the the flowers, I just chose a bunch of different colors, but I only chose to do two greens. So I did more of like a yellow green and then more of like a bright tealish color. Um, Originally my game plan and it's so funny you know what i mean how like you have an idea in your head uh for how your card is gonna go when you first sit down or at least most of us do um and that I, that is not uh that's not how it went i originally was going to you know die cut it out i was going to put it on kind of like a gray background and have the uh, a white sentiment at the bottom for it to sit on uh, so that way it didn't look like it was floating and then you know we'd have a neutral background and all these brightly colored um, flowers but as you could tell if you saw the thumbnail when we first started here uh, we ended up we ended up not with gray that is for sure so here this is like these smaller areas is where it's really important to have um you know kind of like those those sharp tips for your uh colored pencils and then I usually use a couple of different uh blending stumps um and the fantastics work as well you know and they have the caps on them which is really nice they have a um a oh, oh why can't I think of the word they have like a rounded like a bullet nib but then they also have like a pointed one like a pointed edge one um and those work nicely so if you you know this is something you want to do a lot and you don't want to have to keep cleaning your nibs then you know you could just put your caps on those and and just keep those for you know whenever you're you're doing this um i have a tendency to work with probably like two or three of the stumps and i um i rarely <laughs> this is just me being lazy like real talk so like i colored all my yellow first and then once my yellow was done then i used that same nib for my orange instead of having to clean it off um and then these will just stay like this until the next time i go to do this um here with the the greens um i i ended up having to go back over them a couple of times the yellow greens were just a little bit too light um, and so I wasn't necessarily loving those. The teals were really bright, which I loved. I loved that uh, bright teal with that like hot pink color. Um, and then the there's like three little leaf clusters that are all the same. And for those, I did a combination of the yellow green and then the lightest teal color. 
after they're all done, I'm going to go back in with like my darker pencils and really kind of like bolster up any of the shadows. Um, so that way I'm happy with the amount of dimension that I have. And these I'm not going to blend out. I'm just going to put those kind of darkest shadows in and then I'm just going to leave them as is. So that's something else that you can do if you find that you're not happy with the, um, with the amount of dimension that you're achieving. So now that the coloring is done, we are... I really liked the... Um, there's like two little butterflies and a bee that's also in this set. And so I decided that I was going to stamp those as well. And then here's my sentiment. Remember, my original game plan was my sentiment to go underneath uh, in white. <laughs> And, um, so as of right now, like that's still, still the game plan. It's, that's not what ended up happening, but, um, so I'm stamping those down. I'm not going to show you the coloring of the butterflies because it is the same exact thing we just did. I am going to cut all of these out. They all have coordinating dies and, um, then we can start going in and building the card, uh, I really do. I think that this Wildfowler set is super cute. Like when the new release came out, I had a hard time choosing between this one and um, the Better Than an Email because uh, I liked them both. <laughs> so here, this is, I chose to put it on blue and, but I, you know, I don't love a, a, the white background. So here's how I, I color match to, to see um, what's going to work. I just take a piece of scrap paper, I put it right up next to my cardstock, and then there was one or two that were really close, but they weren't perfect. And so here what you see me doing is I'm putting down um, two of the colors and then I'm layering them over top. Uh, so that I can figure out which one is going to be a perfect match. And I did end up finding one that was pretty much spot on. And then I colored in the entire background as well as the um, butterflies. Now I'm going to have to go in with color number two because the first color is too light. Um, but I'm going to go in with color number two and do it again. Did I have regrets? almost immediately. I'm going to be honest because it's a lot of coloring around objects because um, there's so much going on in this this little wildflower garden. But you can see how it just kind of disappears into the card. And so it was well worth it, uh, even though at the time I was like, you're crazy coloring around all of these, these little flowers. Um, in the future, if you wanted to do something like this, you could stamp the flowers onto this blue card stock, and then you could use that kind of white, um, the white trick to, uh, you know, color your colored pencils over darker card stock. So now we have that white uh, at the bottom. We're laying it up there. I have a white border. And I'm like, do I like it? Do I not like it? So I decided to roll with it. I'm using some foam tape to um, pop it up off the background just to give it a little bit more interest because there's, you know, there's not a lot going on in this card, guys. It's a really clean and simple one. So I went ahead and popped that up. I also popped up my two little butterflies. I did adhere my flowers a little bit lower on the card so that I would have room for my butterflies at the top. And um, almost instantly, like th I'm just being honest with you guys, almost instantly I was like, I do not like that white. I do not like that white. Um, it just didn't, everything was blue. It just didn't seem to go. So I did end up stamping the, the sentiment onto some blue cardstock and white heat embossing it. I also added, I believe these are, oh, are they moonstone? I'm not, I'll link them. Um, but so this just kind of gives, you know, a little, I added shine, a little kind of magical feel, um, you know, to what is happening around our little uh, wildflower garden. I'm going to add some shimmers. 
and th- this whole time, this whole time, this white is is bothering me. Uh, my usual white gel pen, um, you know, there wasn't too, like, it wasn't too crazy. I added some highlights to some of the, um, flower petals. And then here is the sentiment. Um, so again, that was stamped in white pigment ink. It was heat embossed with white detail embossing powder and then die cut. It is the same exact one. And I am going to just pop it right over the other one. And that made me so much happier. I liked it so much better. So I hope that this gave you some insight into how to blend your colored pencils if it's something you're struggling with. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I always appreciate your time and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.